Hey everybody, welcome back. And in this movie, we're going to talk about content models inside HTML. And this is really important to understand because this has changed for HTML5 for the for the structure and, and what have you. Um, but uh, previously, and this is what I want to look at uh, first, is what we've had in previous versions of HTML. And essentially, tags kind of were defined under you know two content types here. You had block level elements and you had inline elements. Block level are, are things like include the div tag, the UL tag, images, paragraphs, etc. And they always sit on a line of their own. Uh, so for instance, if you have an image, typically you don't have text that flows around that image visually unless you go manipulate that in CSS. And so that's what's defined a block level element is it, it by nature had a line of its own. Inline elements uh, include things like the span tag, the strong tag, emphasis, etc. And these would happen within a paragraph. So you might want to have some text in italics, for instance, so you could use the emphasis tag, the EM tag. And uh, that would not break the line. So you could have, you know, um, text that flowed inside that paragraph that just changed to italics. So that's the main differences between the two. Now, in HTML5, the scope has expanded considerably. And now we have, um, HTML has seven content models, okay? And I want to go through each one of these. Um, not much has changed in how we're going to style them in CSS, but uh, it is important to know how these affect your document and, uh, you know, give the browser instructions on, on how to render things. Um, the first content model I want to talk about is metadata. And metadata basically sets up your document. And these are things that typically come in the header of the document, okay? We've seen these before, uh, but they're defined now. And examples of this include the meta tag, the base tag, the command tag, link, script, style, title, so if you bring in style sheets, um, external scripts, you have internal scripts, things like that, they all are, you know, the metadata content model. The next one is flow. And this basically is the majority of the elements in HTML5 inside a body tag. Okay, so this, this just describes. And so, you know, you could have obviously tags that fall into multiple categories as we're going on here. Um, but flow describes just basically, um, you know, how the, the, the um, these are the elements that, that would be included in the normal flow of the document. So uh, then the next one, this is, this is kind of a new concept here. The next one we have is called called sectioning. Now let's talk about sectioning for a second. Sectioning is content that defines the scope of sections, okay? In other words, you know, headers, footers, things like that. And there's some new tags that we have here. These examples are like article, uh, the aside tag, the nav tag, a section tag, things like that. Now we've not had a nav tag before in previous versions, but what these do is they start defining um, hierarchical content of your HTML document. So if you think of like an HTML document, like a table of contents of a book, you typically have the book title. Under that you have chapters. Under that you have subsections. You have content that, that goes in each one of them. Each section has a name. Each uh, chapter has a name. Things like that. So, you know, HTML5 kind of takes on that shape in that it's going to have those defined. Okay, so we'll be able to use the nav tag to describe primary navigation for the site. And we're going to get more into this later and, and be more specific. I just want to go through each one of these content uh, definitions right now. The next one we have is the heading model, and this defines the header of a section. So the heading content type is not necessarily, well, it isn't at all. It's not within the head of the document, okay? Um, it, it, that's metadata. Th these are more like the headers of those sections. So when we talked about the table of contents for the book, we're talking about like, you know, the title of the book would be a heading. Uh, each chapter, th the name of the chapter would be a heading, okay? So this is pretty obvious. It includes examples like, you know, any of the H tags, one through six, or an H group. Okay, so these are headings. Then you have phrasing, and phrasing is the text in your document as well as markup within paragraph elements. Okay, so this is, you know, as you, your text is being marked up here. So you have things like A if you need to do a link, uh, ABBR if you need to abbreviate, the area tag, the audio tag, span strong, etc. You get the point. So these are basically text styling tags, um, very much in line in the previous models. Um, embedded, okay, now this is any content. This is a cool new one too. This is any content that imports resources into the document. So we're not talking about necessarily having to have a plug-in for the browser. It's being able to bring in stuff to your document that's external. So these are things like images, obviously. We can now do audio this way. We have a canvas tag now, and we also have video tag. And so this is really, really cool and, um, you know, cutting-edge HTML5 stuff. And then finally, we have the interactive content. And this is any content that's designed for user interaction, obviously. So you have things like the A tag, the audio tag, if it's got controls on it, buttons, uh, the embed tag, inputs for forms, menus, etc. So essentially these are the content types we're going to be dealing with and we're going to kind of start getting into HTML5 here and I wanted to go over these um, before we got going because this is really the DNA if you will that makes up what HTML5 is. So I will see you guys in the next film.